Hello everyone, my name is Aroja Mudad. I am a graduate of SMC year 2017. I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank Anna for giving me this platform to do what I love to do and that is to teach. So today uh, I'm going to talk about clinical management of poisoning and drug overdose. In this lecture we're just going to go over a bit of overview instead of dig deeper into specific poisons and specific drug overdoses. For the specific drug overdoses, we'll have separate talks. So let's just begin. To approach this topic first, you need to understand what poison is. And poison could be any substance. Doesn't matter if it's safe or not in general. But if that substance uh, can cause severe organ damage or death, if it is ingested, breathed in, injected into the body or absorbed through the screen. So here in this definition, if you are taking a substance that in normal amounts is very safe, but you take more than normal amounts, it could become poison. And we have two different types of poisonings. It could be an accidental poisoning or it could be an intentional poisoning. Accidental poisoning is when people just take a drug or a poison without knowing that that's what they're doing uh, and mostly these are kids or uh, adults who are working in these situations where they are exposed to these substances and then we have intentional poisoning where people are just suicidal want to die or they're not they have some psychiatric illness or, uh, or they are poisoned by somebody else and the thing with poisoning is that when a patient with poisoning comes to you in the ER, you don't really know whether it's poisoning or not. Sometimes it's just suspicion and sometimes it's confirmed. Sometimes the patient can give you the history of taking a poisonous substance, but most of the time you don't know. And so you, you're going in blind, which is why the management uh, we're going to discuss today is just going to be a general approach to all kind of poisonings. And in future we'll do specific poisons. The question is why do you need to understand uh, what to do when a patient with poisoning comes to you? Um, why is it so important to learn this? And that's because poisonings are very common. They are the number one cause of injury related death in the United States. So it's not motor vehicle collisions that top, no, it's poisonings that top the injury related deaths. Um, for Pakistan, I don't have the specific stats, but the ones that I found from NPCC say that the, all the poisonings that were reported, among those, 60% are between the age of 20 and 40, and that's our young generation, the youth. And uh, almost half of them are from organophosphates. So if you know these stats, if you know what you're dealing with, you are better equipped to manage these situations when they come to you. So as a clinician who is treating a poison patient, you should have a systematic and consistent approach to evaluation and management. So you should be able to evaluate the patient in a particular way and then be able to manage it in a particular way. So you need to have an approach. If you don't have an approach, you'll just be confused what to do. What happens with poisons is that there, since there are so many types of poisons and so many types of drug overdoses, uh, the patients that will present to you will not have consistent symptoms and findings. So it's not like I can say that, okay, if a pres patient presents with this, this, this is filing, then he is poisoned, and if it's the opposite, he is not poisoned. No, that, that's not how it happens. Sometimes you have patients that look completely fine and they are probably poisoned, and sometimes you have uh, patients who are not looking fine and uh, you'd be confused whether they are poisoned or whether something else is going on. So you need to have a high index of uh, suspicion in these cases. Sometimes these cases occur in isolation, like just poisoning, and sometimes they can occur with some other pathology like trauma or infection, and then that's even more confusion whether it's, uh, the patient's condition is because of poisoning or because of the other pathology. And also the presentation can depend on the type of uh, agent that a patient has ingested or whether the ingestion was done just recently, like it's a, it's a one-time thing, or whether the patient has been consistently taking the drug and has built up that poisoning, but, uh, what kind of medications the patient is taking, uh, whether the drug overdose or, or, or the poison is just one 
substance or effect of multiple substances. So it's a lot of things to uh, take under consideration. Uh, but here's what how you approach it. You will not approach it with the intention of uh, treating the poison itself. You will approach with the intention of treating the patient. So your first approach should be to initially manage the patient, then diagnose the poison, and then manage the poisoning. So the first thing first, what do you do first? You start with A, B, C, D, E, which is airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. You need to make sure that your patient is stable. So you start with that, you take the vital signs, you check the mental status, the pupil size, skin temperature and moisture, you check the pulse oximetry, you get IV access, you check fingerstick glucose, you also do continuous cardiac monitoring, uh, find out the ECG and also search your patient to see what you can find on them. Sometimes they might have the drug that they've taken on them uh, or there might be some other signs and symptoms in, on their body that you might be able to catch by just searching them. Sometimes you have patients where in whom you might be suspecting some sort of trauma. In that case you have to maintain cervical immobilization and uh, you'll have to see if the patient needs intubation or not. Those are just the ER protocols. So I've just given you a list of all these things that you need should do but why should you do those? And the answer to that is all these things give you hints towards your diagnosis. Like I said, different poisons, different drugs present in different ways, they have different effects on your vital signs, on your pupil size, on your mental status, and on your uh, on the temperature of the body and oxygen saturation levels. So if you take in all this data, you'll be in a better position to figure out what the poison is. And in these uh, signs and symptoms, you'll be able to figure out your patterns and the patterns will lead you towards a specific poison. And while you're doing this, you're also assessing your patient's uh, current status. So you should be able to manage any ups and downs in your patient's position. Once your patient is stable, you come to diagnosing the poison. And for the diagnosis, you need to have a good history. The problem with history in poisonings is that it's often unreliable. Your patient, if, if the patient has taken a poison intentionally, then they won't tell you what kind of poison they've taken. They won't die, okay? so they probably won't help you with your diagnosis. If the patient has altered mental status and you are getting the history from another person like a family member, then the second hand history might not be very authentic. It is also possible that somebody tried to poison them and then they are not giving you the proper history. So take the history but correlate it with physical examination and labs. Don't just rely on that. When you're doing the physical examination, start with searching the body and environment in which the patient was. So look for milk bottles, look for a suicide note. It, it might give you like clues. Uh, to what the patient ingested, figure out what kind of drugs the patient is taking or what kind of drugs their family members are taking because it's a possibility that they ingested those particular drugs. Uh, find out what the patient does, what kind of exposure the patient has in his or her work life or, or home life, what kind of poisons are common in that particular region and go from there. Then you get to do the physical examination and when you're doing physical examination there are clues that can direct you to a particular agent. Depending on the drug that the patient has ingested, the, uh, the body might be in a state of physiologic excitation, physiologic depression or mixed physiologic signs. So physiologic excitation is when your central nervous system is stimulated and your pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate and temperature are all very high. And this happens with particular agents like anticholinergics, sympathomimetics, central hallucinogenics, and in some cases of drug withdrawal. As a clinician, you need to know specific symptoms of these drug overdoses as well and how to manage them individually. Physiologic depression is when you have a depressed mental state, it's when your blood pressure is low, pulse is low, respiratory rate and temperature is low. Uh, this could be due to a lot of substance like like alcohol, 
uh, ethanol and the other toxic alcohols like methanol and ethylene glycol. It could be due to opioids or cholinergic agents, sympathylitis, organophosphates. So a lot of things come under that as well. And then you can get mixed physiologic signs in which uh, patient might have like done different, taken multiple drugs or they are exposed to certain metabolic poisons like cyanide or salicylase. They might be exposed to membrane active agents that, that's like volatile inhalants, antiarrhythmic drugs, other anesthetic agents. They might also be exposed to heavy metals like iron, mercury, lead, arsenic, or they probably overdosed on tricyclic antidepressants. Tricyclic antidepressants have multiple modes of action, so the patient might present with mixed signs. So what you're doing when you're figuring out whether the patient is in physiologic excitation, physiologic depression, or presenting with mixed signs, you're trying to figure out the toxicon. Uh, and a toxidrome is a syndrome of a particular toxin that presents with particular signs and symptoms and they have particular characteristic vital signs, mental status, pupil size, neuromuscular findings, skin findings, they might have a certain smell. And depending on those toxidromes, you can narrow down your particular poison. Other things that can help you figure out what kind of poison you're dealing with are your routine labs. So you can do a urinalysis, you can get the electrolytes, serum electrolytes done, blood like your nitrogen to see what kind of effect it has on kidneys, creatinine, glucose levels, and x-ray. I, I put a question mark on x-ray because there are some substances that might be visible in the x-ray. So there are certain radio opaque toxins that you can see in a radiograph. So as a clinician who's dealing with poisonings, you need to understand these different toxidromes as well as what kind of lab results they might present with. You also have on your hand toxicology labs, which are often not needed because the diagnosis depends on clinical suspicion and clinical signs and symptoms. But if you're in doubt, you should get acetaminophen levels and salicylate levels checked because you know paracetamol and uh, aspirins are widely available to everybody and people can easily overdose on them. And if you know that these are the drugs that the patient has taken, then you can do some certain specific things to treat them, like give them antidotes. You can also do a drugs of abuse screening, which is a very inexpensive and rapid urine test. And it just tests for most common drugs of abuse. You also have the option of doing comprehensive qualitative screening, uh, but in most cases that's not needed. So how do you manage the patient? Like once you have figured out the poison, how do you manage them? Well, the thing is the management does not have to depend on whether you figured out the poison or not. Sometimes it can depend on the specific poison and sometimes it can depend on how severely the patient has presented to you and sometimes it can depend on how much time has elapsed since the patient took the toxin in. So if the poison is still in the GI tract, you can intervene right then and there and you know just get it out before it gets absorbed in the body. There are particular methods to do that, which we'll discuss in the next slide. But if the patient has taken the poison for quite some time, then you have to figure out the type of poison that they have taken and then treat that specific poison. If the patient is stable right now, then manage the patient in the ER, observe the patient for some time and let, let him go. But if the patient is in a very severe condition, then you need to probably admit them and get them into intensive care. It depends on the severity of the patient. So there are multiple management options. You can give them supportive care in which you just manage their vitals, make sure the patient is safe and stable. And you can also do decontamination. The sooner the decontamination is done, the more effective it is. So what's decontamination is when you is when you take away the poisonous substance from the body so that the body does not absorb more of it. 
and if the uh, if the substance is getting absorbed to the skin then you should give a bath to the patient if the poison was ingested then get them to drink a lot of water administer activated charcoal which has the property of you know absorbing all these poisons and uh, excreting them to your GI system you can also do gastric lavage or whole bowel indication in some cases you can even go for surgery to directly remove the poisonous substance from the body if you have figured out the specific poison you can give them the antidote of that particular poison and you can also try to eliminate the poison from the bloodstream once it's been absorbed and the methods to do that is to diuresis, hemodialysis, perfusion, hemofiltration, exchange transfusion. Among all these management options, the one that you would need the most is the supportive care and that's where you keep the patient stable. Protect the airway, manage hypertension, any arrhythmia, seizure, whatever the patient is presenting with, you have to like treat that particular thing, that particular presentation. And that's all that comes under the supportive management. What's next? Um, after management, you have a few options. If the patient is stable and has no signs and symptoms anymore, the drug has been removed properly. You can just keep them in the ER, observe them for a few hours, like four to six hours, and then if they're still fine, send them home. If the patient has moderate toxicity or has any history or lab data that suggests that the patient might deteriorate, admit them to the ward and keep them there for observation and continued monitoring and treatment. And if the patient has a lot of toxicity, then it's warranted to admit them to the ICU. In all these patients, if they have done the overdose intentionally, then you also need to get a psychiatric assessment for them. If, if the patient says it was not intentional and you suspect it, go for it still. Your suspicion is enough to warrant a psychiatric assessment before discharge. So that's all for the management of poisons in general and to wrap up my talk I'd like to thank JSM and JSM Yana again to for giving me this platform. Thank you for listening to this talk in entirety. Have a nice day.